Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tim Richards, Technical Services Manager of the Managing General Agents Association. And on behalf of the MGAA, I'd like to welcome you to our briefing this afternoon. This is being delivered by me, a platform on the subject of automating data extraction and ingestion, how MGAs can benefit. Before I introduce our presenters, I'd just like to run through a few housekeeping points. Please ensure your microphone and camera are turned off. If you'd like to ask a question, feel free to use the chat button at the bottom of your screen. Time allowing, these will be asked and answered at the end of the event. If we run out of time, questions will be answered post-event. The presentation is accredited for CPD hours if relevant to your ongoing professional development programme. This briefing is being recorded and a link to the recording will be issued post-event together with the slides and our feedback survey. Please take the time to complete the survey, which will take no longer than two minutes. This allows us to, deli to deliver the best possible future events to our membership. So to recap, today's briefing is automating data extraction and ingestion, how MGAs can benefit from MIA platform. So let me introduce you to our presenters, Martin Henley, CEO and founder from MIA, Tim Kershaw, client and product executive, MIA, and Philip Gouraud, CEO and founder, Rising Edge. Martin has more than 20 years experience with the global insurance industry and was most recently group CIO at Excel Catlin. He incorporated MIA in 2021, bringing together insurance and technology expertise to address the biggest problems through, through technology. Martin is focused on continuing the business's quadruple digit growth. Tim has 40 years of insurance operations experience working for brokers and carriers. He has been COO at five different organisations and was head of UK middle office at AXA XL. Tim is supporting Mia in market and broking product expertise. Philippe is an international insurance leader with over 30 years experience in the global and London insurance industries. He judges his own performance based on what his, his business partners and clients say of rising edge. So enjoy the briefing, everyone. And Martin, over to you. Thanks, Tim. Uh, appreciate the introductions. I'd just like to, before we jump in, I'd just like to say thank you very much to Philippe. So the CEO of Rising Edge, who's obviously a, a MGA based in London, um, for joining us today to enhance, hopefully, what Tim and I, Tim Kershaw and I will talk through with his own experiences in this area of data ingestion and, and the impact on, on MGAs. So thank you, Philippe, for agreeing to join us. So we'll just start, very welcome. We'll just start with the learning objectives. Um, so yeah, Tim's already said this qualifies for CPD. So if in the next hour or so we do our job well, um, hopefully you'll be able to explain how technology and AI, that's artificial intelligence, is being used to effectively replace some of the man manual processes around data extraction and, and ingestion, all that data entry that people are used to. Uh, you should be able to list the primary benefits of automated data extraction and ingestion, both some hard benefits and some soft benefits. Uh, you, you should also then be able to summarize the wider commercial benefits case associated with implementing an effective data extraction and, and ingestion capability. And then with all that knowledge from your own point of view, um, you know, outline some other use cases based on your own experience and, and roles as to how data extraction and ingestion could be used for other things. So. Hopefully, uh, that, that's where we'll get to by the end of this particular session. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. So moving on to a, a little bit about Mia and, and the background to the company and how we thought about the company from day zero. Um, so as you saw from um, the introduction, my background is all insurance. Um, so 25 years, my last insurance role, I was group CIO for what was XL Catlin, London based, was clearly spent a lot of time in North America in that role. Before that, many years in AXA, both in the UK, but also in Paris and out across Europe. You also heard the introduction for Tim Kershaw, different to mine, but very similar in terms of all background in insurance. The thinking behind MIA and the company that we incorporated about two and a half years ago now was can we bring together some people who really understand insurance so we've got 30-year career underwriters on the team we've got 40-year insurance operations leaders on the team such as tim and combine that deep insurance expertise 
with cross-industry technology talent. So now not insurance people at all, but real software people. We're a tech company, and our aim from day one is, can we bring to market solutions, technology solutions, software that solve real problems for insurers, MGAs, and brokers globally? Um, we started with submission processing, which we saw, and having been on the on the buying side, if you like, for most of our careers, we saw as a as a problem in the market that no one had really satisfactorily solved. So we started with submission processing in PNC Commercial Specialty. We've, we've subsequently bled out of there a little into health claims and and other areas that are touched on here. Um, as a as an organisation, we've been moving fairly fast. So we're now live in 19 countries. We've got implementations of the software in 19 countries. We're in nine, 10 languages, nine languages plus English. Um, and our team is spread across the US, the UK, clearly, and, and also India. Our whole vision um, as a company is how do we make life easier for insurers, MGAs, and brokers? How do we take those things that are not really about um the competitive advantage and make them very easy for brokers mgas and insurers to just leverage the technology it just works and we go and not have to spend a lot of time thinking about it that's the thinking behind the company and and, and a bit about our background when we thought about submission processing and this is this is effectively the problem statement we set ourselves three years ago before incorporation of how we thought about submission processing um, today in the market, in the global market. So it's slow and that's feedback from brokers. And obviously it depends by line of business, depends how many underwriters you've got, depends on your, on your throughput, but it's fairly slow, can take days. And often that makes you less competitive. First past the post quite often wins in this world. It costs quite a lot of money. So best case scenario from a financial perspective, you're large enough to have a big outsource somewhere or a team in a low cost location doing this work. Worst case scenario, you've got expensive people in London or, or elsewhere in expensive locations around the world doing this work. And you're obviously pulling um, time away from underwriters on, on this effort. And then finally, minimum data capture. What we see, what we have experienced and what we've seen across the globe, as we've been talking to companies in a lot of countries, is typically what's pulled out of those submission documents, which is not always, but it's often an email with multiple attachments from a broker. What's pulled out of those submission documents is just enough information to, to fulfill the need of the next system or next process in line. And there's a lot of information, rich information is left behind in those submission documents. Um, that, that could be gold dust for future thinking, for future pricing um, that, that's left behind. That problem statement we saw very much as a global problem. I haven't yet spoken to a, a, a company in the insurance industry in any country that doesn't have this as a problem in the PNC commercial specialty world. And we were very keen, and we'll come on to what we've done, but we were very keen to actually solve the problem, not bring to market some part solutions that then you could spend a year or two working on to try and make them work for your business. That wasn't really our, our aim. Our aim was to actually solve the problem and allow MGAs, insurers, brokers, to move on to the next topic and not spend more time focused on this. MIA uses artificial intelligence. We're not all about AI. It's not the only thing we do, but it's a core tool that we had to use to solve this initial problem. Um, I wouldn't mind bringing Philippe in here. Just Philippe, obviously that's how Mia saw this problem. Just be interested for when we first started speaking a while ago now, probably 18 months ago. And, and Philippe, Rising Edge was Mia's first MGA client. So holds holds something quite in our heart. Um, but it'd be great, Philippe, to hear from you about how you saw this as a, as a problem and what the potential opportunities were, maybe a little bit about Rising Edge as well as a company. Hey Martin, uh, th thanks for having me on the call today, uh, and I'm always delighted to, um, uh, to 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 support you because indeed you know very proud to be one of your first customers and the first MGA one. Um, and and just for clarity and transparency, this is not a paid for cameo. Um, the um, uh, the uh, so just for uh, oh sorry, I could just get this. My apologies for that. I should have put this on silence. 
Um, so in terms of like, yeah, so why, why did we do this, right? I mean, the, the, the first reason is that uh, we, um, I mean, I'm just curious by nature, right? And, and I think that, uh, um, so when Martin um, approached me and saying, hey, Philip, look, this is what we're doing. Do you want to take a look at it? You know, uh, frankly, I've always thought that there was not much I in AI, you know, so I always had my doubts about uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, but Martin being Martin, me being me, I said, okay, Martin, let's give it a go. Let's take a look at it. Um, and I had my reservations. And um, and and I was absolutely stunned with the uh, initial pilot that that, that we've done. Um, so so in all transparency, and honestly, you know, this is like how it started. You're saying, okay, I'm curious. I want to look at, take a look at it. I'm not too sure about this. But hey, if you don't try, you don't know, right? And so that was kind of like the uh, the, 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 the first reason. More fundamentally, in terms of what drove us that to, to, to get there, Firstly, particularly given the audience here, you know, like as MGAs, you know, we, we have to do things differently. We can't just kind of do what everybody else does. Otherwise, we already know where we're going to end up, you know, at the back of the pack, because there are certain things that we are not, i.e. a larger, more powerful, kind of bigger network, a lot of other things that legacy carriers have. So we have to do things differently, you know, and so we need to really put innovation um, and, and that the curiosity and that desire to do things differently at, at the center of what we do. And in fact, it's one of our core values, right? In innovation. Um, we try to do things differently. We try to do things better. Um, and that's through the use of um, innovation and technology, but always supporting our objectives. We don't do tech for the sake of tech. We do tech for the purpose of um, what we need to do. And what, we, what it is we needed to do um, is, is not as much about cost savings. You know, so in, in all that mission statement, you know, maybe you, you might be surprised, but what was driving us first and foremost was not the cost saving. Of course, this is important, but this not, these were not the drivers. The drivers were twofold. One is to bring fun back into our business, not in Rising Edge, but in our industry, you know, in terms of like you're taking away the, the, the activities that actually uh, no, no one enjoys do, doing. So how do we actually eliminate that and replace that by tech so that we can really focus uh, um, our our time and efforts on things we like to do, you know, originating business, underwriting, servicing clients, uh, learning, you know, developing ourselves. So that was kind of like the um, the, the, the first reason. And the second one um, is is really kind of like about user experience in terms of uh, on, on, on the broker side. You know, we needed to be able to kind of like uh, address the fact that we were actually fortunate enough to be quite successful and we had to deal with like a, a very fast growing number of, uh, of of submissions, so so I would say you know in terms of like yeah so what what you've outlined outlined there uh, Martin kind of touches what the, the the reason behind why we started this but I would just want to really emphasize that actually to us the main benefit out of this was really to look at kind of again the user experience both from kind of for our team and in terms of the quality of the service that we are delivering to our clients. Fantastic, thanks Philippe for that hand over to Tim. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so yeah, we've heard what the problem was and, and thanks for that, Philippe, giving a very clear view as to, to what, what Philippe and Rising Edge, Edge were looking for. So as Martin said earlier, we were looking to develop a solution that's sort of enterprise-wide, global, so you know, would work across geographies. Um, he said it, it's a, tech, it's a tech solution that at this point really does major on AI, artificial intelligence. Um, but we, we've got an ability to redirect those broker submissions typically that come in um, to a, an intelligence submissions inbox. And there are various ways of getting it there. Um, they can consume that data then in, in all of the myriad formats we get. So you'll know it today. You can see some of those broker submissions will have an Excel spreadsheet attached. Um, there'll be a PDF. There may be a PowerPoint of some, some, some form, any number of things. And also within the covering email, typically there'll be information that's pertinent to that particular risk that, that needs to be lifted as well. Uh, so we, we can upload that data. Once we've done that, and the whole point here is taking what, what would be described as unstructured data and, and through the platform, playing it back in a very structured way, playing it back in terms of the fields that people want to see. So once we've got that, there are any number of ways we can play that back to our, our customers, and including actually putting it straight back into someone's policy admin system, um, putting it into other systems, so inflation management, pricing, et cetera. Um, and we'll talk a little bit when we, we come on in a minute to talk about some of the, um, the modules we use about being able to prioritize some of those particular submissions. So, 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 so what do you get at this particular point? It's, it's, it's really just moving from that 
problem statement that said it was slow to actually being able to process submissions efficiently, literally in minutes. So we're saying 85% plus, and it is well, it's it's, it's exceedingly plus of that 85 now um, of taking everything and, and and getting the getting the answers out. Philly very kindly spoke a lot about what 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 he was looking for, and you know that that enhanced you know underwriting insights that they might be able to get. Um, and, and we can now, you know, through this platform and through other utilization of AI, you know, it gets about two to five times the amount of fields captured that, you know, the current solutions, and those are predominantly um, people, um, would, would do. Um, so we can add additional data over and above what was in that submissions document. And, and, and the net result, I mean, we, we were talking, you see at the bottom of this slide, you know, there is an expense reduction. We estimate that can be up to 60%. And depending, it doesn't really matter, actually, but, you know, depending upon the size or scale of any organization, you know, that can be quite substantial. And, you know, those expenses are generally people. I mean, it's not for us, and we never would, to say what what, what you should do with, with savings you make around people. But, you know, the clever, the clever organizations redirect that capacity to do more meaningful things and redeploy in, 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 in more, more, more simple ways. But if you then get that blend that says, actually in addition to making those operational savings back to where Philippe was coming from you know there are some real benefits in terms of you know your overall book and managing that portfolio because you're just getting to things quicker you're able to respond much more swiftly to your to your brokers and other, and other third parties in the chain you know Martin said it, I think, at the start, often still first past the post wins. You know, we speak to a lot of people who say, you know, by the time we've got to looking at a risk and we find one we really like, we go back to the broker with a big smile saying, yes, that's one for us. They say, terribly sorry, but it doesn't matter. Chubb, Chubb quoted that one yesterday. You, you're out of the game. So so that speed, that being able to focus on those risks that really matter, that meet your, your underwriting appetite becomes becomes quite valuable in this in this whole scenario. So I'll just move on to the next slide and talk a little bit about the um, the modular approach we have. Um, and then, you know, this this is, it's, as we, we started, I'm, I'm going to bring you back to that problem statement because you can now again start to see how we're, we're solving for that. So, you know, these, these proposals, you know, the, the submission pack, if you like, um, which will have a, you know, it could be very simple, straightforward, or can be really quite complex. We'll come in and we'll get in, ingested. Um, I think I spoke about it on the last slide. You know, we're doing this now within, within minutes of machine time as opposed to, you know, hours worth of, of, of human, human effort. Um, and that's really, the, you know, the, the, that whole start of the process is ingesting all of that information um and and and, and having that into a, into a, into a really useful format that we can then immediately play that back as i say it's very much structured data and and it really will depend at that point what people want to see so you know we have discussions with all sorts of customers at the moment so actually you know what we used to do minimum data entry because that's what we did it, 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 it saved us time and it was all we frankly needed to understand whether we had an interest in a particular risk you know, we just like that. We'd like, you know, in an automated way, just replicate what we've had before and play back 20, 30 fields, if you like. Uh, and we can do that. And we can do that in a way that, that, that they request it. W what will often happen then is people say, actually, this is now a risk we like. Um, and we'd like to know a little bit more about it. So actually, you know, we'll come back and we'll extract, you know, it doesn't matter, another 50 fields because, you know, we want to put that into our exposure management system or, you know, want to help us a little bit around pricing. The actuaries want, want a little bit or more information. Um, so that, that's that's the core of what we do. That's the core of that ingestion is getting that valuable information out in a very structured way that can be played back. I talked about it being modular and you can see from this slide and you know, it literally left to right, you know, there, there is a validation module and this won't be for everybody and it depend often on the, the size and scale of organizations and frankly what, what capabilities they already have that pre exist for them so you know we, we can validate risks by you know doing things like sanctions checking um you know the know your customer type of, 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 of routines that have to go on through we can do some some of that party checking with you know the likes of dun and brad street and um and, and, and other organizations like experian and um just just enhance what's already there um there's a third module which which 
well, so that, that's validation. The third module is more about enhancements. And, and that, again, is just saying, look, you will get a lot of information in that original, original submission, but you might want more. And typically organizations today, you know, go and find out more, you know, whether that's a simple Google search or using other um, areas at the, to, to help them supplement the data they've got. So Mia, for example, as others would, has a smart search engine there. We can suck in, you know, engineering reports and other, uh, other internal documents, if you like, that might exist. Um, um, including obviously external data that comes from all sorts of different um, places and that can just supplement what's there um, and, and then the fourth the fourth module is the one I like you know you heard a bit about my background I work both in, 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 in broking houses and on the carrier side and so I've seen this through through various different lenses um, but but actually it, it, and it really is quite simple this you know let's not make this complicated I used to see, particularly in my, my last role when I was, you know, at XR Excel or at XR Catalin, some of those volume businesses got an awful lot of um, traffic coming in, you know, lots and lots of broker inquiries that they often just didn't get to, they literally didn't get to, let, let alone being able to respond. Uh, and, and the triage here is just saying, look, if we work with you, customer, so if you're an MGA, you clearly know what your appetite is, the sort of risk you're looking to write. Um, and, and, you know, we can be very clear on all of that. We, we can then literally match that, correlate that, if you like, uh, with the data that's been extracted. And, you know, get, get to, a, I said it was simple, you know, almost a red, amber, green type of cue. So, you know, red would be saying, we really don't think this is going to interest you. Um, for whatever reason, it's just not on your appetite. Um, and, and, you know, there is a value to the brokers in this world of an MGA or an insurer just going back and saying thanks, but no thanks. You know, a decline, you know, they, of course they want the keenest terms and the broadest cover, but, but actually a decline can be quite valuable to a broker who's doing their fair, fair market assessment. You know, they, they need to be able to get back to their customers and say, well, this is where we're at. Um, and Amber would just really be saying, we think you might like this, but there's something strange um, or something just slightly different you might want to check in. So best example I can give is this, this class of business typically pays 25% brokerage and the broker's asking for 30. So, you know, you might want to understand if that's valid or if there's a particular reason for that. And, and then the green course is really just saying this matches appetite. We think this, you know, is something that your underwriter wants to be looking at very quickly, you know, making their own judgment. We're not saying at this triage that we're going into any auto rating or anything like that just literally getting it in front of the underwriter as early as possible to say we think you like this we think this is typically within your appetite and you might want to get back to the broker you know pretty quickly and be first past the post uh, so, so that that's really what that modular approach is all about um, and, and, and gives a whole bunch of benefits um, to, to you know MGAs um, and, and in terms of, of, of just the way this interacts with the various different systems the reason it's modular is, you know, people can take as much or as little as they want. You tend to have to have module one or otherwise, you know, the other bits don't work very well. But, you know, quite often people will miss out, you know, modules two and three because they've already got solutions that they're perfectly happy with. And some will take the triage, others won't. So I think that's some of the, the, the real benefits we're starting to see with, with this, this whole um, model. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. Philippe. Obviously, rising edge. As all companies are on a journey, interested to hear from you how you're using the solution, how you're seeing the benefits come in, and, and where you're thinking about going. Um, so, I, I guess the, the the first part of the question is that uh, you're asking me, did it work? Right? Um, and I, I think I, I, I give kind of like an initial answer. It it did, and I think. Uh, beyond our expectations, you know, we uh, we started with our core product line, uh, directors and offices and liability insurance. Um, we we identified typically kind of like twenty, I think twenty two fields, uh, eight of them being core that we said we really need these, and uh, and the others kind of like uh, optional, um, and and the match rate is indeed way over eighty five percent, definitely on the core ones. It's it's I think it's it's pretty much hundred percent. And um, and it's it's higher than eighty five uh, across the board on how we ingest the, uh, um, the 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 submission. So once we passed that kind of initial doubt and we got the pilot and the implementation, which the second surprise I said was like the ease of implementation, right? Uh, so we, um, uh, we 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 integrated this in our proprietary platform. You know we, what we chose to do from the very onset. You know, there's um, nothing wrong with the kind of like a standard quote and bind to tools or, or packages that are out there. I'm not criticizing them, but certainly we felt that we needed to have 
a proprietary tech platform to be in control of the pace of the development and the agility of plugging in what we needed to plug in when we wanted to, to plug it in. And, and that's why we had our system up and running. And, and you know, the, the way I look at it, you know, our, our chief operating officer is a little bit kind of like a, a mechanics uh, on the Formula One. The difference is that he's changing parts of the engine while, while the car is on the track, right? I mean, so, so we, we cannot just stop the car, put things apart, change the engine, put something different. Everything has to be done while we're racing, win the market every day. And that integration was actually done really smoothly. You know, we, there was no disruption. We, there was no downtime. We didn't have to stop everything. Um, so, so I think that's in terms of like the, uh, the, the ease of the, um, the implementation. But I would just alert on, on something is that it requires, I think, a bit more than, than that. You know, you need to have the, um, the, 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 that innovative mindset, you know, that willingness to, um, uh, to, to, to fail. You know, in terms of trying to to do something, and hey, it didn't work. You know, then you move on to 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 the next bit. In in this particular instance, you know, we did not experience any failure. It worked, and in fact, we rolled this out through the additional products that 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 we have, and we are on that journey. These four modules, um, and um, uh, and in fact, I would say we're probably between three and four uh, at present. Um, sorry, like many of us, I have this kind of damn bug uh, that is kind of uh, circulating around there. Uh, so my apologies for that. Um, so yeah, so, so you need to make sure that you have the mindset. And I think we have that innovation mindset. And that also contributed to the success of the, um, uh, the implementation. So they did work. Well, you know, we have four underwriters in the team and we, we, we manage with a volume on an annual rhythm basis of about like 4,000 submissions. So that gives you an idea. And exactly as Tim said, you know, in a different setup, you know, we would have probably done some kind of like um, uh, involuntary triage before even as the submission was arriving, not even seeing it, putting aside, getting too late to it, etc. Now we know that we have, we touch 100% of the submissions that we get because the submissions, when they arrive, we just send it in within our, our, our system and they go through that filtering and, 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 and data scrapping of, uh, of, of Mia to, uh, to, to get us to put the underwriter in a position that the first time he or she actually really looks at the file is like when they um, look at the, uh, the account dashboard. That includes the data that's been picked up in, uh, through, through the, 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 the Mia um, uh, pr process. Um, and the reason I'm saying that we're between three and four you know, is, uh, is indeed, I mean, this is just the beginning of a journey, right? In terms of like, a, you can apply the same process at the back end, you know, uh, in terms of like a first notice of losses that are coming in to absorb the kind of like the information that is in there to help kind of like be really much faster on the claim. And I think Martin, last I heard, you know, is that we're pretty close of, uh, of having completed that stage yep. as, um, as well. Yeah. So um, then everything that Tim talked about, you know, this kind of like uh, the triage, the uh, red, amber, green, you know, in terms of how you go to the next stage, um, how you actually continue enhancing the service you provide to the brokers is really important. And as I just as a last remark, you know, I think, you know, the um, I sit in between the two of you in terms of experience is that a bit more than 20, a little bit less than 40, uh, kind of like in, in, in between. But boy, have I spent time in my career uh, particularly within large legacy carriers to come in and say, oh, we're going to create a portal that all our clients are going to use, all our brokers are going to use. And my experience there is pretty much a failure all along. Why? Because a client will not use ACE, I mean, your portal without having to use all the other portal of all the other carriers or MGAs that they're working with. Same for a broker, right? In terms of like, why would the broker kind of bother uh, entering kind of like that submission into your system, not you, me, as, but in, in, in the rising edge system, you know, like, I mean, they, they're not going to do this because they, they, they're, they're going to approach 20 different markets. That, so if you have 20 portals, they're not going to do that. So as MGAs, we have to be really super nimble, you know, and we have to adapt our process to what the brokers, how they work. And they each work in different ways. And, 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 and the beauty about that data scraping or use of AI here is that we don't impose anything to the broker. We don't say, this is a form we need. This is a kind of like the, the format, you know, or you put the data in, in, in the wrong format so, so we can't deal with it, you know? Like, I mean, we're not forcing them to anything. Send us whatever you have, you know, we'll deal with what you have. And then through the other modules, you know, we're gonna enhance this with that third party data if they haven't been able to. Now, if it's really critical, we'll be able to identify right away what's missing and going back very specifically to a broker saying, 
this is the information that is missing for us to be able to provide you a quote. So, and, and, and that's, I think, one, one of the key beauty here is that there's really, uh, as, as Nimble organization, we have to adapt to uh, our, our, our market environment and that really in, in enable us to, uh, to, to do this. Um, so yeah, so you know, simply said, uh, it works, easy to implement. Um, Cost-wise, you know, we were we at the time when we started, we were a startup, so it's not that we were backed by uh, 300 million of venture capital money to kind of like uh, figure out a way of how to spend it. You know, every pound counted. You know, and um, so the cost made perfect sense, but the benefit, as I said, and I reiterate on that, is 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 way beyond the cost saving. You know, it's really about how it enhanced our business, how it enabled us to not miss out on any of the submissions that are crossing our desk. Um, how our uh, how our, our, our team enjoys working, you know, in terms of being able to focus on what they do best, what they really want to do, um, and the ultimate uh, customer experience, i.e., broker experience, is also enhanced because indeed it's all about speed, right? Um, and I think we we hit the mark there. So so that's that's kind of like our, our experience from from our end. Thank and Martin, and, and and maybe you know, and just as as a last point, you know. Yeah, because I'm I'm really a big fan of this, you know, and 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 this is yes, we are all competing against each other, kind of MGAs and all kind of stuff. But as a market, we have to do better. Um, and as as Rising Edge, you know, we are there to kind of like share our experience and and help our industry get better. You know, we so with with no arrogance, so in a very humble way, you know, I invite anyone who actually wants to kind of know more about how we've done it, our experience, if there are very specific questions. I mean, please be, feel free to, to approach myself, you know, or approach our, our COO, Miles Murphy, uh, contact us through our website um, and, uh, and, or, or LinkedIn or um, whatever it means you want to use. Um, and, uh, and we'll be more than happy to, um, to give you uh, more details about our own experience. Thanks. Thanks, Philippe. <laughs> Thanks, Philippe. That's fantastic and great, great offer for everyone. Um, I just wanted to reiterate a few points before we before we move on 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 this slide and where um, Mir is maybe slightly different to others out there. Now, as you've heard um, from Tim, um, Philippe, and and me to some extent, the core of the business is ex insurance people, <clears throat> and the the reason that we've managed to make the artificial intelligence work as philippe was describing i.e it just works um is because we've pre-trained the artificial intelligence for pnc commercial specialty and the huge and you, you know it all very well the huge huge variability of things coming in from brokers um tim touched on some of the different form types but it can be something the brokers made up at that afternoon it can be um through to mrc's accord forms in the us etc etc there's a long 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 list and it's a list that's infinitely long in my opinion i.e it can be constantly changing um so what we did now three years ago was created a huge data model using underwriters we couldn't have done this without underwriters huge data model of more than 15 now more than twenty thousand insurance terms so what data do you want to extract from these submissions and we use that from the beginning of our journey to train the ai which has meant that we've got something that works instantly um and if if i'd been talking to you all 18 months ago or two years ago i would have said we've only got certain lines working lines of business working because we only bought to market lines of business that we knew and were very confident actually worked i.e. were being extracted to 90-95% accuracy from day one. Um, and that's the that combined with um, the fact that when you're discussing with me, you're talking to insurance people, is our core differentiators and is why we've been able to implement in 19 countries in less than a year, why we've managed to get into 10 languages, et cetera, et cetera. And that's completely backed up, and this is a really important point, especially when your company's the size and background of Philippe's, that's completely backed up with our commercial model. So we don't charge any upfront cost. There's no consulting fees. There's no setup fees. There's nothing of none of that. Um, it's only You only start paying once you start pushing submissions through the machine, 
and it's pounds, dollars, euros um, per per submission. We we cover, and, and this is an imperfect list. I'm very open with you. We actually think about everything at coverage level, which would clearly be a much, much, much longer list. And as everyone groups coverages into different products and products into different business groups, it's very difficult to come up with a list that that succinctly showed everything that we've got working to use tomorrow, today. Um, but this this hopefully gives a pretty good idea of what, what Mia has got working out of the box, i.e. work straight away. And again, all the way back to our ethos as a company, is we saw this as a problem that in the industry hadn't been solved. And to Philippe's point, which is absolutely spot on, in my opinion, without trying to change broker behaviours or client behaviours, how do we solve this problem? And that's that was very much our thinking from the beginning, is how do we bring something to market that just works? You don't have to spend 6, 12, 18 months trying to get it to work. It just works. And then it allows you as a business to then move on to the next topic whether that's enhancement, whether that's better triage, whether it's claims, et cetera, et cetera, rather than being stuck on the first topic, which is getting that data into your business in an automated way um, from, the, from the beginning. That's the overview of um, Mia. Clearly, Tim and I can speak for hours, but to keep it succinct for everyone, um, I just wanted to circle back to these learning objectives and i don't know tim would you be okay to, to just sure. to talk through some of these and and some of the points we've salient points we've covered yeah absolutely look i sort of made a promise at the start that by the end of this session uh, <laughs> you'd have achieved all of these and and i, and I hope we have so uh, you know the first one there explain how technology and and we said it, it is a technology solution that we've got here for me um but it but it's in large part ai artificial intelligence how it's being used to replace those manual processes and you know we went through quite clearly what we saw as the problem statement and and you know wherever we've been which you know around the world as martin said earlier nobody has yet told us that's wrong uh, everybody goes yeah that's it you've got it um so you know th this is where artificial intelligence technology can really get in and replace some of those those manual processes martin literally just minutes ago we was talking at length about saying well you can't just have ai unless it's trained and it has to be trained in a really intelligent way itself and um we at mir have obviously got that and i think anyone who's using ai in any industry segment you know you, you have to have knowledge of that industry to actually make this thing work um, we talked about benefits and, you know, I said at the start, that both hard, hard and soft, however you want to define those hard benefits being things where you can put a dollar sign in front of it, if you like. I spoke in, in, the, in the session I was giving about, you know, that's 60, up to 60% cost saving. That's, that's clearly a massive OPEX benefit. But actually, more importantly, you know, there, there are those, not even soft, where there's those other benefits that just say, you know, you can uplift your underwriting. You know, you can be more responsive to, to your broking community. You can get your underwriters spending their time looking at those risks that, that count most and not having to wade through stuff that's frankly wasting their time. And again, I'm, I don't want to repeat a lot of what Philippe said very eloquently around that whole piece and how that's particularly worked, worked well for, for the Rising Edge team. Um, you know, there are wider commercial benefits, you know. Um, yeah, look, you know, when, once you've got this within an organisation, you know, you, you can start to see the commercials and, and start to see, you know, uh, how, how it fits in, in, in your wider organisation, whether you're a small, small, a small firm or even, even a larger firm. And, and then I can't answer this. You guys will have to answer it yourself if you're listening in. But if you if you've sort of understood enough about how um, the technology and how AI has been been utilised for this data ingestion and the extraction bit, uh, again, are there other parts of your processes? Are there other things that happen within your organisation that typically are probably taking a lot of human human time and effort that you'd say actually you know maybe i can come up with another use case maybe you know we, we can start to use technology or, or artificial intelligence in a way that will will help us with whatever this this needs to be so you know i'd encourage you all um whatever your roles are to perhaps think about that beyond beyond what we've told you today so hopefully um you, you know those are some decent takeaways and you know we've matched some of those learning objectives um, I don't know now whether we have any questions in the chat or whether we're back to Tim, but I know we've still, I think, got a little bit of time left on on the clock. If people do have questions, please, please, please feel free to 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 ask them. We do, Tim. Thank you. Um, Thank yeah, you. Uh, we just have got one question in actually. Um, so this is from Philip. 
Thank you, Philip. So uh, have you considered how AI will change the duty of disclosure? The responsibility is on the proposer to disclose all relevant material facts after a reasonable search of information available to them. Make their presentation in a clear and accessible format, not data dump. If the MGA obtains the information via AI to fill in the gaps, will this transfer the responsibility on the underwriter? And can we rely on AI to conduct this reasonable search to make our underwriting decisions at individual risk level? So I start with that one, Martin, you may want to add. I mean, yeah. my sense on this is that what, what, what artificial intelligence technology is doing is frankly replacing the role that's been human for a long time. So as I said earlier, whether that's an underwriter who's having to do this or you know, whether it's a, a team that, that's offshore as Martin related to. So we're just literally replicating, taking that information from that submission and, and playing it back. Um, if it's there, the AI and the technology will take what's there. It doesn't make it up. It doesn't, you know, actually AI doesn't have fat, fat fingers. It can't add a zero by mistake. Um, so, so in that first respect, I think we're just saying you're using AI as opposed to people and all of those duties remain, I think, um, as, as they would have been. If you start to think about the enhancement that, that we talked about, you know, that, that may be slightly where we're pulling in information that wasn't provided by the proposer, uh, and we're trying to supplement that, make that particular, um, not the submission now, but, the, but that particular entry for the MGA or the insurer slightly richer, there, there may be some, some issues in there. But that, that's my off-the-cuff quick response to that. It's a great question, but Martin, I don't know if you've got any, any thoughts, or Philippe indeed, on that particular one. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. So there's step one is extract the data accurately that's in the submission documents. Step two then is enhance or validate or do other things with that data or pull other data from elsewhere. And clearly uh, generative AI, chat GPT, all of that is in the press a lot at the moment. And that's what some of those technologies will do. It will not make up data, but it will collect data from a wide various of sources and maybe summarize it for you or infer additional information. When you get into those elements, and I don't, I don't think, I'd be interested to hear Philip's view, I don't think the industry has really worked out what it wants to do there. But when you get into those elements, clearly there's an element of, hmm, can we trust it yet in terms of guaranteeing those those duties? Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I can't speak on, on on behalf of the the industry, but, but certainly, I mean, did, did we consider the duty of disclosure in implementing this? No, we didn't. And and I think the the, the main reason for this um, is, is I realize that now, kind of like we did not kind of like inadvertently, but because of you know when you when you think about disclosure, you think about this usually as a, either as a first line of defense when you have a claim, and 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 that's not how we look at claims, right? I mean. When when, uh, when when something happens, we're there to kind of like uh, identify how we can support the uh, the, the client to, to navigate through the circumstances that they are uh, facing. However, the duty of disclosure is really important in terms of making sure we do the right risk selection, uh, and and then the next step being uh, apply the proper pricing to, uh, to to this. And 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 on that, you know, in almost in a bit of a provocative way. You know, I, I expect more insight from third-party data sources that augment our underwriting file than what we actually get from the submissions. And and when you look at submissions, you know, again, uh, I, to, to, I may take the risk of upsetting some, but a lot of the information that is actually available in submissions is actually available in the public domain. Right. So, um, so I think you know the, the, the core information that are, is really specific from the client that you need to, to 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 find out. You know, you just need to make sure that you've identified the the signals that actually will point you to kind of like that red or amber that Tim was talking about. To kind of saying is is that there either through stuff that you will find into the submission or through third-party data. So, so it hasn't been a massive concern of us that um, uh, the, because we're, we're in the line of business where it, it might be less kind of like critical than in other places, you know, other line of business that might be more subject to say uh, fraud, right? Um, so so that, that's why, you know, it's not again judging other line of businesses that our, in our business, it was not too much of a concern. Okay, and we do have uh, one further question at this stage. So feel free to, enter any further questions in the chat facility but uh, this one is any plans to extend the product 
to analyze and transform other data sets such as Bordero? Uh, yeah, yeah, so we can, the ingestion module works at Bordero's um, at, at the moment already. Again, we saw that as within the scope of the big problem, if you like, that's facing the industry in this space. We saw that as part of the problem. Um, in terms of analysis and, and enhancing in the same way, you, you saw the modules. Um, in terms of analysis, that's something we're looking at at the moment, is that analytics piece. You, you saw on the slide we didn't have an analytics module. Um, that's something that we're, we're looking at at the moment. Um, yeah. We, don't, we haven't quite decided exactly what we're doing there, but we're, we're looking at that at the moment. Great, thanks. If, if, if I may, Martin, I guess, I mean, trying yeah. to kind of understand where the question comes from, the, um, it, it, it might be, if you're a capacity provider, um, indeed, and you receive all these uh, border rolls, you know, from various uh, MGAs, you know, I think the same principle applies then to us, you know, as an MGA ourselves, you know, receiving all these different submissions. Um, and, uh, and, and indeed, you know, instead of imposing to your uh, MGA, you know, that you should be looking at like clients really in terms of like trying to impose them saying, hey, you know, we want to have this border with these like uh, 75 uh, columns, you know, or the Lloyd's format. And when you actually your company market, you know, like, I mean, all these columns, half of them, you have no idea what they're there for, you know, they don't apply to you. You know, I, I think that technology is, is really relevant to for again, a capacity provider or a fronting company to come in and say, you know what, we're gonna make it super easy for you, MGA, provided you capture the data, however you capture it, you know, don't don't bother about what's the format of your border row will absorb the information. And I think that, that there's a strong potential there. And on the topic of border row, us as MGA, we have kind of like the issue at the back end, you know, it, for, for those MGA that actually produce the uh, the border rows. And, um, and I hope that um, Martin and, 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 and Tim, that Mia will, Will not be upset that uh, that I mentioned this, but um, it is a very timely question because we've actually just announced, you know, how we are dealing with uh, producing and validating our border rolls um, ourselves using a bot for this, right? I mean, so this is yet another kind of like a tech plugin that we've put in. You know, we've we've identified the need, you know, and and now we are able to uh, not only generate the border rolls automatically out of our proprietary platform, which we were doing. But now we've even added an enhancement to it is that they're actually validated through the use of a bot. So they're even more reliable and, and accurate than, than, than ever. Um, and I think that's, again, back to the mindset of, of innovation. Try and test. Try and fail. Try and test. You know, and, um, and, and, and as MGAs, we have a duty to kind of like uh, uh, be at the forefront of, of, of innovation, I believe. Thanks, Philippe. And we have uh, another question from Tim Dorning. Thanks, Tim. Have you had any submission types that the system cannot extract data from, for example, PDF, pictures or screenshots, et cetera? Um, <laughs> through our journey, yes, lots. Um, where we are where we are right now, really we're we're not coming across much that can't be extracted um, anymore. And, and again, it's it's a bit back to how we thought about this problem. I mean, the way we think about this is is less about what's the input document, because we know we needed to solve for all those different file types, and you're describing some there. It's more, what are the fields that you want extracted? Now, we trained more than 20,000 fields, insurance fields in the AI. However, if, and this scenario does happen, not very frequently, but it does happen, if a client comes along and say, well, I'd, I'd like to extract this field, um, this data field and we don't have it pre-trained again our commitment is it should work so we will train that in the ai for free which is usually a two to three week turnaround time um so that then you can start extracting that that field of data so for us it's really it's not really so much about the form types it's more about what you want to extract and have we got it got it ready to go and if we haven't we're very transparent and we'll, we'll get it ready to go I used to get told off about handwriting. So I used to say in some of the earlier sort of pictures we did that, you know, if a human can read it, the AI will read it. And, you know, I then got told, no, no, the AI is much cleverer now. If it can read better than a human can, because it's trained to look at doctor's handwriting and work it out. So uh, as Marcy said, it's much more about what are you looking to get out rather than what's in there. Okay, and the final question for the minute, unless there are any others, um, how can or does the platform integrate work alongside with Whitespace or PPL at the ingestion stage? Tim, do you want to talk about that process a bit? And then I'll talk about the tech. 
Yeah, I mean, I think, again, this is one of those things where if, if you think about an MGA or an insurer, um, you're taking that information and you're getting it into a shape where you, you, you need to know what to do with it. So at that point, yeah, if you're utilising a white space, a PPL, and it's very London market centric, obviously, at this stage, then, yeah, the, the ability to port that information is is, is there. And, you know, MIA works to, as, as you would expect, a bunch of standards, whether they're record standards, et cetera, that, that everyone would have. So I think, again, what, 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 what MIA is about is, 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 is taking that data, you know, extract, ingesting it and then extracting it in a way that someone wants it then it's available to be used in a structured format in whatever way you want to put it into you know whether that's a market reform an mrc market reform contract or a utilization of some of those placing platforms that exist i don't know if that covers martin if there's anything you'd add to that no, i need to say we work clearly we work with both those organizations yeah. um the actual use case is seems to be so slightly surprisingly maybe quite different by client is what we found um i mean i'd really think of especially our ingestion module is just it's an engine you can almost plug it any plug it in anywhere i want to extract this small amount of data this large amount of data um from those different input documents or forms and or i want to populate something so we could be you want to populate an mrc format so we can we can do we can do things like that so it's if there are areas that you're currently having to deal with manually, even using PPO white space, for example, me could replace the manual, even if it's 20% of the total, for example. And if you want a user case, you know, for, for, for us, which is one of our next uh, um, iteration, I mean, for us, PPL, I mean, the underwriting job is way done by the time we touch PPL, right? I mean, uh, by then it's more about kind of like uh, getting the slip and confirming uh, the, uh, the, the the order. So at that stage, it's no longer about underwriting. You're already kind of getting into the post of bind, but it's a critical stage. And and when you think of it, you know, in terms of like what goes wrong um, in, in, in our industry at times is that actually somehow something got slipped into the slip, right? It was not exactly what was actually Kind of agreed maybe you, you we produced a quote you know and the slip was a little bit different because we're following different terms you know and um and even from our own kind of like a data capture standpoint in terms of understanding which what endorsement are we on etc you know um the, the the manual task of going through the um the, the slips is really painstaking right um so being able to kind of like uh, uh, integrate that data through uh, ai or data scrapping the, the the mia technology there is just something one of our next step another example of something that we have implemented and then forgive me uh, martin it was not with, with you guys either um but it's in terms of like a tax schedules right in terms of like a, no one wants to talk about it because a it, it has like a two bad words you know schedule is boring it means postpone and taxes oh my god let's run away from insurance premium tax but the reality this is where we actually get bucked down and making a lot of mistakes lose a lot of time on really booking on being able to invoice and collecting the cash and then we're surprised that you know the average time it takes to collect kind of like premium is calculated in terms of a month you know which is kind of like it kind of shocks anyone who's not from the insurance um, uh, industry but here again you know being able to use um the uh that uh, uh, ingestion capabilities to even validate what's uh, what is in in these attack schedule uh is an in, in immense source of uh uh, of efficiencies and taking the pain out of our process just these are just two examples you know that actually and and as martin just said you know look at your process identify the pain points of like you know, kind of moving data from point a from point b you know um and mia can can assist in, in smoothing that process great thank you and that's um the last of the questions so uh just remains for me to say Thank you so much for your presentation today, Martin, Tim, and Philippe. Um, if anyone does have any further questions that they've um, just thought of, or if, indeed if you're watching the recording, feel free to um, uh, contact me. It's tim.richards at mgaa.co.uk, and I'll be very happy to pass those on. Thanks all of you for joining us. Please don't forget to provide your feedback and look out for forthcoming MGAA events. I hope you do have a good afternoon. Thanks again again for joining us and see you all soon. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Bye-bye.